Hey guys, this is Battlecode 2015. Let's look at this year's game by viewing a match. I'll view the match from Eclipse using the Ant Run target. You can run this from command line if you're not using Eclipse. I'll have Alex Test Player play against himself on the map Hooks. You can see here that both teams start out with a headquarters and the headquarters is producing this unit called the Beaver. The goal of this year's game is to destroy the enemy team's headquarters. Uh, but to do that, you'll probably have to get through his towers first. The towers are both very strong defensive units, and at the same time, they give a buff to the headquarters, making it even stronger. What you'll have to do is build these beavers, which go around and mine. They mine ore, and they can also produce buildings. Those buildings produce other units, and they also enable the production of second tier tech buildings. Each robot that you see here, each unit that I can mouse over and select in the client, is running its own copy of the robotplayer.java uh, file. And it'll be up to you as a contestant to write AI for all of these robots so that they can work together and destroy the enemy headquarters. In this case, Alex Test Player is not effective at massing a large amount of units and attacking all at once. Instead, he's just walking in and, and getting destroyed piecemeal. So in the end, the victor of this match will be determined by tiebreaks. And it says here, Team B won by default. You're probably wondering what kinds of units are available. So I have this tech tree here showing which units can build which other units. You start out the game with just the headquarters and the six towers. I haven't shown the six towers here because they're not necessary as part of the tech tree. The headquarters can produce this unit called the beaver. The beaver is the sole unit capable of constructing buildings. The buildings are the supply depot, technology institute, barracks, helipad, hand wash station, miner factory, training field, tank factory, and aerospace lab. For these three buildings here, it's necessary that you have at least one of their requirements first before building them. So the training field needs at least one technology institute. The remaining robots are all combat units that are produced from other buildings. So the barracks produces soldiers and it takes a certain amount of time to do so. So you have to have a lot of barracks if you want to produce a lot of soldiers very soon. The two units capable of mining are the beaver and the miner, the miner being a specialized version. It's necessary to mine ore in order to collect resources to build these other buildings and these other units. Another resource is supply. Supply is generated at a constant rate at the headquarters, and that rate is increased depending on the number of supply depots that you have. The headquarters has to pass the supply out to its other units and try to distribute it so that the units can move and attack more often than if they don't have supply. The mechanics of the game are explained in full in the specs document, which is here. I'm somewhat far down in the document looking at the different units that are available. You can see the names of the different units and their ore cost, their production time cost, their supply upkeep, their hit points, their attack damage, their range squared, so it doesn't say range squared, but the beaver's range is not five tiles, it's the square root of five, that number rounded down. Their movement delay, which is the delay between movement actions, their attack delay, the delay between attack actions, and a new, a new kind of delay called the loading delay and the cooldown delay. Now, I didn't just make this graph in paint to explain that, or maybe I did. If the unit attacked at turn N, the next attack from that unit is at turn N plus attack delay. Pretty simple. But if the unit attacked at turn N, their next move, if they plan to move next, is at turn N plus cooldown delay. So you can see that the two attacking and moving are now coupled somewhat loosely. 
Same thing for movement. If you moved at turn n, you can't attack until loading delay turns have elapsed. Or if you moved at turn n, your next move is at n plus movement delay. In general, the loading delay and cooldown delay will be smaller than the attack delay and movement delay. Now, there's a complicating factor. Depending on the amount of supply you have, you'll attack and move at different rates. If the unit is fully supplied, then that means that the rate of attacking and moving is doubled. So, it says here, the supply upkeep is not necessarily a constant. A unit that is fully active will lose that amount of supply per round, but if a unit is not really moving around much, its supply upkeep is lower. Also, if it's thinking a lot, if it's using a lot of bytecodes, then it will cost more supply per round. So what do I mean by bytecodes? In Java, for battle code, we count up the amount of compute time in a unit called bytecode. In the install directory, battle code release, you'll see a file called methodcost.txt. In here, you'll see the bytecode cost associated with each of the different methods that are available in the battle code API, as well as some methods that are available as math functions. There are some numbers that are not shown here, such as addition, array indexing, and others, that also have some small cost in bytecode. The effect is that we can count up how much compute time your robot is using. When that robot hits its maximum bytecode limit, which for most robots in the game is 10,000, then, the, then that unit stops its execution of the code right there. So if it's on line 173 and it runs out of bytecode, then it will have to wait until the next round to continue thinking. This is important because your robot, if it runs inefficient or slow code, will end up moving and attacking slower than other robots. Now robots are all running their own copy of, their, of the code, each of them running it separately. If they want to communicate with one another, in general they'll have to use the message array. Each team has a size 65536 array of integers that can be broadcasted to and read from, and broadcasting and reading have their own associated bytecode cost. The arrays are private for each team, so it's impossible to interfere with the other team's messaging. However, there's some shared information among robots. For example, robots can see what each other can see, so it's not necessary for them to broadcast all of the information about what they're seeing. It's more like a way to coordinate team actions and perform distributed computation. There's also some limits on maps this year. They'll consist of traversable tiles, which are terrain tile dot normal. Um, it also contains some void tiles, which are painted to look like water in the client and it'll have some off-map tiles which are at the edge of the map. The non-void squares of the map will start with some amount of ore that's not negative, um, and we don't make any guarantees about the pattern of the ore, though we suggest that in your map making you make the distribution of ore uh, somewhat continuous rather than having a few solitary points with a, with a uh, pardon the French, a shit ton of ore on. Each robot has a limited sight range for its detection of enemy robots. The victory conditions are generally destroying the enemy headquarters, but if they're not destroyed, then it'll depend on these other factors, including hand wash stations. Um, it's, it's very important to have sanitation, and the hand wash station provides, I mean, if you were to say it provides no other function uh, than to be the fourth tiebreak, you'd be right. Um, but I feel like that's neglecting the fact that sanitation is so important. It's not in the game, of course, but, but just the concept of sanitation.
So with this, we've looked at most of the functions and most of the elements of this year's game. In the next lecture videos, we're going to go over building a player, and that'll give you some concrete examples on how to use these mechanics to your advantage. I hope this helps, and until next time, bye-bye.